Thanks for staying with us. Now, most people are living paycheck to paycheck and developing additional streams of income can really help you feel more financially secure rather than relying on a single paycheck, experts say. And it can put um, you in a position to grow your wealth. Diversifying income streams is a strategy the wealthiest are already employ. Almost two-thirds of self-made millionaires, 65%, have at least three sources of income, according to Rich Habits, author of Tom Corey, who studied the habits of 233 millionaires, including 177 self-made millionaires. About three in ten had five or more streams of income before you start a side hustle or pursue a new revenue stream one of the most important steps is to be sure and clear about what you want to achieve with it. So we are asking, how can we create multiple streams of income towards financial freedom? That's the question. I'm pleased to let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wisho Africa one with the hashtag Wisho. Now, I just remembered something. I want to attack money on live television. What? So that's how they <laughs> call you for something that you know that is not your forte. And you just say, I can't do it, money. Why? Why you do so many things? <laughs> I just remember no, now. Guess what? I didn't do it. Uh, but you wanted to I, do it. No. If I did not attack you, <laughs> that don't you know that that is Owa's job? You guys don't even take that seriously. <laughs> don't come to Bunny with any business plan. Though. She will just collaborate. But you are someone that Uwa. you do a lot of things. My, my name, yeah. Yeah. My name is Money Money. <laughs> I thought you got the memo. <laughs> Honestly, see, for me, I actually, I am a believer in multiple streams of income mm. because it just helps you to be financially secure. So the reason why people work, make money, do this nonsense is because about. of security. Mm -hmm. Exactly. See, look at what we just talked about. Mm -hmm. So for me, I just feel that be secure financially. And okay, with what happened two years ago with COVID-19 and all, a lot of people lost their jobs. True. They did not think, people that did not even think that it could happen, they lost their jobs. So what happened? They, you know, started living lower than they would want to live. So for me, I just feel that have different sources of income. I um, worked in different banks and in one of the banks, I was in the HR department. So I came out of banking. I've um, set up my law firm. Law firm is 12 years old this year, but I also have a HR company running on the side. Mm. I also have, you know, different cleaning have... services, <laughs> interior. Do you have a nation in there? No. <laughs> some of them are. <laughs> so but, so they are coded. Okay. Yeah. You know, but the, the truth is, I am a believer for many reasons. It helps you to create financial security, it's a ticket out of debt then it also helps to control your blood pressure. Mm. Because if you have money, then you have <laughs> peace of mind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so for me, it's about all these things. And then, you know, right from when I was a child, I always had my mom, my parents saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm. So why do I go to school, come out, be as old as I am and put all my eggs in one basket. Why would I want to do that? Mm. So I divise, some diversify. Us, some of us were just beginning know? to wake up. Oh. Well, then <laughs> wake up. <laughs> they say whenever yeah. you wake up, is it's your, your morning. morning. Yeah. Absolutely. So let me bring in our guest. It's Mary Oma Williams is a performance-driven premium and luxury brand builder with a vast knowledge of exquisite luxury brand across high-end time pieces and jewelry and um, luxury lifestyle. She's skilled in management, luxury retail, sales, and marketing strategy with a BSc in business administration from Convenant University. We have two guests. So Chinelo, on the other hand, Chinelo Anene is an eccentric real estate mm. consultant, passionate scent enthusiast, and endearing childhood educator. Chinelo fondly refers to um, as Nello is definitely a spontaneous being with different creative hearts. She is currently the creative head of Aromantic ng yes a home fragrance brand and the head of sales and marketing at the top leading real estate development company in lagos she is a powerful force to reckon with and uses her tireless energy to break new financial grounds and succeed so and might i add they're both looking and beautiful. smelling beautiful <laughs> <laughs> our studio is, is, is oozing <laughs> of the scent so thank you so much nello thank and you. mary for joining us tonight 
so first of all you guys look amazing i've already said that Thank like a you. billion times Thank you know <laughs> um so last week right this conversation started off last week and it was quite um instructive for us because we were talking about you know vocational institution mm -hmm. and we met with the ceo of um, a particular okay. company that you know just launched her her factory where they train people and for us it just said a lot of things it said things like not the regular or the traditional vocational um, studies that you have in your head that mm -hmm. you know it's almost like you don't have any work you want to do in this life you go and learn how to fry for and all so. those kind of things so for me what she did she just blew my mind because yeah. i now saw someone like myself actually looking towards going into learning a vocational yes. skill someone like money because now there is a standard and you're not just doing it because you feel like doing it. you know that when you do it you get it right and it will be like an immediate um push into growing whatever it is that you wanted to you know grow before you even decided to go in that first place so maybe i'll start with um um, Mary, if you can just share a bit of your background quickly and what made you go into learning, you know, I think this perfumery you went to learn or something. Or yeah, candle, candle making. making. Awesome, yeah. Um, so basically, I studied business administration, came out of school, I did NYC in banking, and then I went to, to luxury retail. So in between luxury retail, I'm at a post and I've always had a passion for scents. Mm. Incense, candles, I'm always, you know, burning something and I've wanted to learn about it. So I came across Abella mm. on Instagram yeah, and, you know, it just keeps popping up. I mean, algorithms and all of that. And I'm just like, okay, I might as well take this on. The industry is huge you know it's a growing industry and i can see the potential in it as much as even when i worked at um, polo how i knew about um the first thing that drew my attention was i walked into the office and i'm like this face smells nice smells good. what is it you know so i looked up um, where they buy their diffusers Diffusers. From, you know and i'm always buying one candle <laughs> always buying something and everything and it's a huge industry i want to tap into and i went to abella and she did an amazing work, mm. really. Um, the insights mm. that she gave is really amazing. You can see that this is not someone who is just saying, let me just do a business because everyone is into business. There's a structure towards everything. She's teaching you the calculations, you know, the minute details. And also she's telling you about aesthetics. She's telling you to think globally. So I've seen the industry space. It's, a, it's an industry space that is growing wild. And I decided to take up an opportunity in it because I do like sense. Um, I'm crazy. I've, I'm really grateful, like how everyone says, "Oh, I'm smelling nice," because that's like <laughs> the greatest compliment, compliment that ever. I can ever get. Like yeah. if I'm spraying a perfume, it's like, oh shit! Like when I come outside and someone says, "What are you wearing?" Uh -huh. it's, it's you know, heavenly. It's, it's heavenly <laughs> to me. You know, and I've I've burnt candles and I've had my friends say, "Oh." Mary, like my clothes smell like your house, mm. you know, and it gives me so much joy. And you know, I'm also learning the psychology behind scents, and you know, it's really powerful as well. So that was how I got into the whole awesome, thing. awesome. That's <laughs> quite interesting. Let me come to you, Nello. <laughs> okay, so my story is quite interesting because I mean, when it comes to multiple streams of income, I think I'm like a pro at that. Mm -hmm. I'm a typical <laughs> evil girl. <laughs> Mm. So there is, I mean, for me, from, I'll take from university, it's either been event planning, it's been, okay, you come tell me, well, we can, do you know we can sell clothes, we can sell shoes, do you know we can do, I mean, as far as it brings in money, right I'm, there. There. <laughs> I'm there. So, I mean, how did I, I know, right? <laughs> so, yeah, how did I start? I mean, for, it was, Initially, when I said my brand, Aromatic, I wasn't, I didn't have any technical knowledge, right? Mm. So I was outsourcing my product. So I had people that were doing private labeling for me. And then I realized, you know, I think the thing can be better because I got, I had my fair share of disappointments. Like sometimes I'll get the candles and then they're not properly made or the diffusers, I have customers complaining, you know? And then, of course, I saw that um, advert mm. to, you know, learn. 
and then I went there and I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me actually learn this. And it was interesting for me particularly because you know when people say they're going to learn hairdressing, mm. they're going to learn barber. There's this look they always yes. get, you know, this like demeaning. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, it's not actually so bad to learn a skill. And I, I I've come to understand that with the way the world is going, you definitely cannot survive without having multiple no. streams of income. Mm. You have to do more than one thing. I lost my job, I didn't have a job for three months. And wow. I don't know how I would have survived if I didn't have other streams. I mean, I would have, I don't know what would have happened to me. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity. And I mean, I would also want to tell people that, see, don't look down on people that are doing any vocational yeah. training of any sort. It's actually very, very important to have multiple streams of income. So, so I like what you touched on. I'll come to you, Manny. I like mm -hmm. what you touched on because again, this is what we're saying that and that was why it was very instructive for us when you know abella she's my friend but it's beyond friendship i know the story i know how i was doing guinea pig to be testing whether the candle is meant mm -hmm. but her attention to excellence and detail mm -hmm. you know got me very very interested in her brand so i monitored it over the years so when that eventually kicked off, i said finally so, you see, the reason somebody will look down on somebody that is going to go and do hairdressing, really, how many, apart from the very few salons that started, you know, yeah. branding themselves in a particular way, how many people would say, okay, you can boast of, you know, graduates, you know, from top universities mm -hmm. coming to your, yeah. your vocational school to come and learn something? It's very difficult. And, and that's why we were saying, you know, I mean, when we talked last, we were talking about the government has to take it seriously. Look at the young boy we talked about, the solar cars. Yeah. Just imagine if there is a vocational school mm -hmm. where I can go and learn how to replicate what he's doing. And more people. You understand? So what do you think happens to the overall mm -hmm. GDP of your economy, mm -hmm. right? So for me, multiple streams of income is not just something that we should just be looking at it and be sounding uh, very, very it's tush. Something that must it has be to be something that yeah. must be... Um, be in our subconscious that everybody must understand that you cannot just do one thing right but let me come to you money <laughs> okay um i would like to ask you some questions okay. like what did you study in school okay so i studied computer science computer mm. science mm -hmm. okay so um you didn't mind going to a vocational school because you know you, you talked about the look yeah. you get from yeah. people when you say you're yeah. going so what would you say to the people now that are watching our viewers who have this thing? They want, they feel like learning something else, another skill, but they don't have the time. They don't even think that um, their jobs would allow them. Yes, they don't have the time and they, they don't have the money to pay for it. What do you have to say about that? Okay, so the truth is, let me start from time. Right? Mm -hmm. The truth is you create them for whatever matters to you. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, and I mean, if, you're, if you have a passion for something, right, you will some way, somehow, I mean, you can't say you don't have two hours every day, so mm, to speak, yeah. right? And thankfully, some of these vocational schools now have, like, what I call it part-time, right? So you can actually walk in and have a conversation and say, okay, I actually do a nine-to-five and I want to do this, so what plan can you draw up for mm. me? So I don't think time is an excuse. Again, I would say, um, having multiple streams of income is very important in the way the world is going. Mm. Okay, now there are people that are jack buying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you go to a strange land, right? Mm. You probably go for school or you relocate with family or something. I hear most people, most of my friends that I know that have relocated say, oh, I mean, I'm earning X, Y, Z amount, but I know that I still need more money. And I know people who have learned makeup, who have learned hairdressing, who have learned whatever. And then yeah. that's how they're actually you know, making extra, extra income to survive, yeah. right? So you can find yourself anywhere Where? at any time. What so you do? my dears, please don't. <laughs> then how about the money part? You know, I, I don't know how much you pay to learn, you mm -hmm. know, this skill. What do you say about it to the viewers who want to know if it's expensive? Um, expensive is relative, if I'm being honest. But you see, nothing good comes cheap too, right? But also, that's why we need to bring in the government into this. So if the government also creates means, I remember growing up, there used to be a technical college around where yes. I I don't know if we still have things like that these days. Mm -hmm. So I think government needs to do a great job developing those technical colleges so that people like Abela, for example, can then go there and offer classes. I mean, I'm sure it won't be as expensive as it would be in her 
in her school, right? And there are several other things people could learn. So if the government encourages vocation, vocation or let's say vocational trainings, they would create means to make it cheaper, mm. like more subsidized. Affordable. Yes. Yes. So, so I'd like to hear from uh, Mary because somebody will look at her and say, ah, this lady is posh, you know, this kind <laughs> of... <laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll, they'll wonder why you decided to pick luxury because luxury is not particularly... Um, it's not particularly that... Uh, it's not as popular mm -hmm. as you have it. It's just recently now that people are really paying attention to the kind of things they use, their curtains, their bed sheets and all of that. So... How would that translate into real income, you know, that it's like an everyday thing, you know, for you? But you know what? I just want to take us um, through one small break. When we come back from the break, you'd answer that question. Stay with us. We'll be right back. If you just tuned in, we're having an amazing chat with Chinello and Mary on creating multiple streams of income towards financial freedom. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet to us at Wayshow Africa, one of the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so Mary, I asked the question around luxury, right? Because, you know, people have argued mm -hmm. that if you want to be a billionaire in, in this world, you must make sure that whatever commodity that it is you're selling is for mass market, so, yeah. right? So how are you able to, you know, um, um, look at this, say, this field and see that, yes, there are so, there's a lot of opportunities in the, what's it called, the luxury space right now? Because I know it, hmm. hey, how do you that say hair? That is, when I calculate, I'm putting 10 plots of hair on my head, <laughs> 10 plots of land on my head, <laughs> you know. But luxury is actually getting, is gaining a lot of ground and all of that. But how are you able to... Why, first of all, why did you choose luxury? And secondly, what, uh, how are you able to translate that into income for you? Um, so, basically, I like the lifestyle. Um, you see that you just look like... <laughs> the baby girl. Like. <laughs> the baby girl that you are. <laughs> I'm right from when I was, you know, young. Yeah. My, even my mom or my aunties would tease me. This one, you like Shakara too much. This one, you like, you know, you just... And I had an auntie, you know, who's... A bit boxed up, so I used to everything. I'm taking after her. Ah, I see how Auntie carries her bag. Ah, okay, you know. And I got into the luxury space, and it's huge. Social media also has helped as well, you know, to boost the lifestyle. To say, okay, there's there's more to the basic living. You know, I'm just earning my small money, and you know, you're now saying you can do more. You can explore. And we're in an age where everything has to be aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. True. You know, beauty comes in every way, from how you're appearing on TV, you know, from what is it. And sometimes I realize that's just all it takes, it's the aesthetics. Mm -hmm. When you now add your technical know-how and your quality to it, to it, you can set your pricing as high as you want to go to appeal to the people who are on their Your target market. Yeah, you know. So for me, that that's what it is. Um, it has created income in the sense that these days, I mean, like you said about the girls, everyone is pushing the lifestyle, mm. you know. In as much as I'm promoting pushing the lifestyle in an authentic way, mm. authentic way because as we said, money gives you freedom. Money gives you peace, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we talk about how today Gen Zs are moving, you know, from one job to another. It's because we don't see ourselves trapped in, like, our parents' generation. For most of our parents who, are, who made it today, they're either the evil business people or they're the ones in politics. Or you see, uh, they just stayed in service and retired. You know, my parents are not even business why so i i have a, i'm telling you i have a struggle you know coming out of that mm. you know because it's just it's good to just office get the office and, you know, get and i'm just like no mm. like the i mean that doesn't allow me to express, express myself you know how i want to um i want to be in another country and still be able to work and still have money working for me um when i visited abella i could see the potential you know, she has gone beyond creating products to now creating an empire where you're also mm -hmm. empowering people, mm -hmm. you know, to 
to you know do better and have other multiple streams of income if even relating it to my parents you know you're going to blend candle making they really do not understand yeah. when i came I out when, when i came out of school <laughs> when i came out of school i went to learn makeup so now i would say i haven't even seen myself be that vocational i mean handy but i've always just had a flair and you know everything fits together in some way it could be an advisory it could be the hands-on mm -hmm. you know so for whatever it is i'm doing i want to go beyond mm -hmm. like just selling the product i want to educate you so selling luxury to me is also teaching people mm -hmm. what luxury is it's yeah. not just about carrying a Birkin bag and you know it's something that comes from within you know it's a substance when you see confident people yes the money does you know help to boost your esteem but it's a lifestyle that comes from within and I can see that in this genera in my generation is something that is you know is making waves right now so mm. if you can create a business out of that people want what is aesthetically pleasing as little as their Instagram page you know you want it to be arranged you want it to look you know a certain mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. and the older generation sometimes when you have these conversations they cannot on this they they, they can't, can't they can't they can't, they can't relate but the truth is you know you are addressed how you be addressed yes um if i walk into a place and i'm going for an interview and i look this way you know there's a certain level of respect okay. you know that comes as well if I'm speaking about my candles, there's a certain level of technical know-how. I'm also very strong on quality. So luxury is not just about how expensive it is. Are you getting value for, for your what money. you're paying for? Yeah. For your money, do you understand? Um, like where I braid my hair, everyone, because like, I do braids a lot, everyone always asks me, oh, where do you do your braids? And now I can see that the young lady, she's really good. She, as in, I like how she picks my hair. I'm that detailed. Um, but so, like, what I can see now for her is that she doesn't have that branding, mm. that aesthetic. Oh, she's gonna put you in a, a mm. AC mm. environment. Yeah. It does not concern. But she knows, <laughs> she knows the, the job. job. Do you understand? So every time, so I, every link. time, yeah, every time I'm going there, I know I'm not going for fancy. Mm -hmm. I just want to get my hair done mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. So. Now, being Gen Z, being educated, going to school, is refining such things, mm. you know. I like when I walk into a hickey's hair and I'm offered tea. It sounds very bougie, but come on. It's what we want. We, you know, my, it is my hair supplier. <laughs> you know, it's, it's what we want, yeah. you know. Is that you walk into a store and the person greets you and the person says, oh, welcome, ma. You know, they remember your name. They remember it's is lifestyle incorporated mm. and you know that's well that's the area i want to focus on that's the aspect i want to you know deliver service on mm. you know because i'm i'm big well, you know that. the funny thing about what you just <laughs> said is the biggest missing link in nigeria today we don't understand customer experience and uti would always talk about customer experience yeah. because customer experience is what Very guarantees mm -hmm. yeah, sustenance back. in yeah. business because you can be everything Hiki is also someone that I know when she started, you know, she chopped all our money away. away. <laughs> you know, but it but if you go into her salon, for instance, you would realize that, you know, this is someone that is doing this business with a difference. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, yes, you can get your lash done anywhere, mm -hmm. but there is something more that they are offering. So how do we tie up all of this? Because yes, we want to push for luck um and I'll come to you, Nello. We want to push for multiple streams of income. But how do we tie it up in a way that we're not losing um, the quality of what we what is being delivered mm -hmm. amongst all the multiple streams that we are trying to, yes. you know, that we are maintaining a, a standard of excellence, quality, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what's it called? Um, um, value for money and all of that with your clients, ensuring that as you're making that money, you're also giving excellent delivery as well how do we tie that up okay so i'll give um personal experiences right so i'll start with i've been a teacher right and i was a teacher at the british primary school so i mean you can imagine the caliber of people 
that are bringing their children there. Mm. I mean, it's not cheap, right? So you are dealing with people that have that, so that belong to a certain class. class. And I mean, if you misbehave, they are pulling their child out the next day. Mm. So there's that. I think it all just boils down to people having quality training. Right. So, I mean, if us, a teacher in such school, I don't have the adequate training to know that, okay, if I'm dealing with this kind of situation, this is how I should handle this, how I should, this, how I should treat this child, this is what I should say, this is what I shouldn't say. I wouldn't know what to do and what's going to happen there. But I might be the excellent teacher, right, delivering quality education and whatnot, but if I'm not warm to that child, the child is not retaining any knowledge. Absolutely. So I've lost on that end. Now let's come to me being a real estate consultant. I'm dealing with clients that want to buy houses over, talking about 100 million, 150 million. They're spending a lot of money there. You can't, I can't, I mean, even if, yes, we know how these people can be sometimes, they're talking to you in a certain type of making some demands that don't just make any sense, right? But then you have to, you have to know how to address them. You have to know how to cajole them. You have to, have to convince them to do whatever it is, or rather to spend whatever money it is they want to spend. You're selling candles, or you're selling diffusers, or you're selling room sprays, or whatever it is. If your product is not great enough, or even if your product is great, and then you have a client that wants to buy, and your client has probably um, complained and said to you, oh, you know, the last time I got the 150 gram candle, um, XYZ happened, there was a sinking, there was this, there was, and I was like, I don't know what happened, <coughs> leave with it. That person won't come back to you to buy, right? So I think it all just boils down to, boils down to having adequate training, because that's the only way you're able to then sustain Manage. all of the things that it is that you are doing. Mm. So that's, Absolutely. that's, yeah, that's I important. think even to add to that, outside of even the training, you also need to add, you know, expertise in a lot, because uh, there's, um, sorry, not expertise, knowledge of you must really know what it is the doing. in and out of of it right and again people management emotional intelligence I'll, you know i was yeah. also going to add to that human resources mm. because if you're sitting in your nine to five mm. you're not going to be able to run around and do the things Wonderful. you're supposed to do so you need human resources you know you know people um foot soldiers doing the running around Absolutely. So let me let me add something i i have to testify to that because mm -hmm. it's been so I started, I started my home fragrance brand last year, and it was a struggle for me because at the time I had a proper nine to five. And I started that business out of the blues. I literally woke up one day and I, I, I had always had it in mind, right? but I decided to take that step. I just looked at like, I'm doing this today. And if I didn't have the people I have in my life right now, I don't think, I don't know how, because we literally mm -hmm. planned a brand launch in, I think five days. Yes, five days. And it was, they were all looking at me like I was crazy, but then I had people who, Believed could you and you. could run around for me. Actually, tell me. She was. She's like, no. You know what? We're going to do this today. Chinelo, what's going on? What's what, what's up with the decorator? Have we gotten the candles? Have we gotten the diffusers? So I, I I think that's very very correct. Yeah. My resource is very very important. Very important because I run multiple streams of income. I know the power of people. Mm. So I have people at my disposal. Yeah. I say around. money, money, person. <laughs> 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 and they're loyal to you. And yeah, see, well, uh, okay, yeah. To an extent, they're loyal. So you find some that are very loyal. You find some that are not so loyal. You just have to learn how to manage them. With people, you manage people. Mm. Some of them have been working with me for over 10 years, 12 wow. years. Mm. Yeah, so loyalty has been accomplished over time. Then there are some of them that just started working with me maybe a year ago and it's still building. So you build it, they're building blocks, but we're going somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> so let's take some comments. Good evening, ladies. Um, you have intelligent, intelligent guests with you. Great ideas and implementation. Nigerian government should create an enabling environment for citizens to attain a greater height. Do have a great weekend, ladies. This is Ade, and he's sending us message live from the UK. Thank you, Ade, for the yes. days that our YouTube decides to work. <laughs> but so I, I, I like to hear you. You, you want to take your message now? Okay, go ahead. Okay, we have Daniel Elo, a regular, saying, "Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters." Of what are you saying, ways? Concerning the idea of financial freedom and making extra income, it is very important to the individual. 
my dear beautiful sister chinelo just hit the nail on the head and made a strong point by saying that you cannot make it and survive by doing just one thing alone salary earners to be honest and sincere cannot make it comfortably alone because some of them earn peanuts and they need to complement it with adding part-time businesses to it let's take an example from the guy who had so much talent in his head and hand and built a car i am sure that by now he's surviving comfortably who knows he may even be the breadwinner of the family thank you daniel Ilo. so having um because it's is beyond just learning the skill so what are the drivers for then pushing what you have learned to actual sales you know converting this yeah. you know so what what you know what do you what would you advise you know so after that um are you going to take more classes for probably marketing she's already looking like she's a brand consultant <laughs> <laughs> she's very the brand expert uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know because when you listen to her you would know she's a brand, brand expert yeah, because true. when when it comes to because it's beyond just selling honestly sometimes guess what people can actually package sand and sell it to you and tell you this is the best thing that happens to them. 50 cents sold water. Yes. He <laughs> made a fortune. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, what's his name? Um, Will Smith's son as well. He's selling water too now. So, I mean, so it's, it's, it's not just about the product anymore. So now yeah. that we've learned the skill to do the work, like maybe we've gone to learn scent making, mm -hmm. uh, candles, we've learned hair making, nails and all of that. So how do we translate that? into a proper business that is now generating the income you want to go first okay <laughs> <laughs> um it's not so easy mm -hmm. you know everyone is going to say entrepreneurship entrepreneurship <laughs> second stream of income second stream of income my dear <laughs> when you actually hit it eh, you will just say please let me sit down and use my 95 Bye, collect, thank you. collect my salary you yeah. know um it's really not so easy but what I would say is the driver is if you have a vision, if you have a vision of where you're going, that is going to be what will push you. Um, I'm someone who works best on how I feel. So learning the candle class, everything I'd written that candle class, I went back to like my notes from uni because I journal a lot. And I ran up on candles. I ran up on those exact things wow. as I, as and when I was in like hundred level in wow. university. Wow. Mm. So like even getting to the class, there are times when I'm looking at Abella and like as in our eyes are locking and it's like you know <laughs> she I know, I know yeah what you know. Um, so now translating that into sales hasn't been easy. Also because I do not want to just give anything out. I don't want to just put anything out there all in the name of I want to make money. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I'm in the luxury space and I'm saying if I'm gonna sell a candle for twenty five K or thirty five K, I have to be giving you something. There's there has to be a reason why you're coming back. So there's a lot of, you know, building, building up that you would do. And um coming out into the world, nobody's going to push you. Sometimes yeah, I'll be honest, is your poverty that is going to push you <laughs> to you know to translate it to do it um i can't there, there are no there are no technical know-hows but you have to put up a strategy you have to put up plan you have to put yourself out there look for funding if you do yes. not have funding if it means taking loans borrowing mm. just to get it running you know put yourself out there social media has made things a whole lot easier for us what are you saying? And not a situation where you put it out for a while and you sit back. It's something you have to constantly be Commitment. doing. Yeah, do you understand? Like it's like sales. Like I mean, you have to be on yourself. So even when I'm resting, even when I feel like let me drop it in my head, my mind is thinking, is this candle kind of thing? Or is this candle going to blow from this candle kind of thing? <laughs> if you sleep, if you sleep on it, you're sleeping on business. you know whatever it is. When I'm buying something, if I'm buying hair, I'm thinking, have you bought measuring scale? Have you bought your candle things? You know, that's a driver. Mm. Your situation will drive you. Yeah. Your, passion, your passion, your passion will move you, mm. you know. And 
for me, I'm in a phase where I just, I want to create with my hands, you know, not even necessarily. Yes, I know that I, I've gotten to a stage where I know that the money is going to come. Okay. Mm. Money has to come out Absolutely. of it, you know, but you have to believe in that dream. Mm. I think the belief really is even what pushes you the most, most. Yeah. you know. I had, I had myself asking, I found myself asking my friend a question to say, um, she started a food business and I said, ah, so, um, like, is this what you'll be doing now? As in, and she said, what do you mean by that? Like, why do you think I can't stay here doing this food business and make a million, like millions out of it? Mm. And I thought to myself, I looked at parents around me. My auntie has been doing catering. It's only food we yeah. need, you know, <laughs> for. Specializing in what you're doing. Yeah. And that's where your treasure is. It's definitely. That's where your treasure. In fact, the longer you're doing it, the more you're gaining grounding in it. Absolutely. The more your expertise is growing. Absolutely. You know, and with your own unique selling points, your own authentic self that you're bringing to it, that's what separates you out. Absolutely. And definitely, you make money. We were talking, and we forgot that the time has flown away. <laughs> if you had one thing to say, Chinelo, what would that be? Um. Okay. So, what would drive you? Let me use myself. What drives me? I want to make money. A bill. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so how you translate everything you've learned <laughs> yeah. into cash for you? So <clears throat> I've m tried to make everything as practical as possible and then make sure that I'm actually, people love to see consistency. So I've yeah. made sure that I'm, I'm consistent in everything mm. that I have, I'm putting my hands into. Okay. I think that's, that's it. Money, you had anything to say? Yeah, if I have one thing to say, I would say that um, for some people, they feel very guilty when they need to do another stream mm. of income, you know because they think they're being disloyal to their employers. Mm. So for me, I don't think it's you're being disloyal. Even in the Bible, there's a parable about the talent. And it says that God gave some five, some two. I just feel that I'm one of the people that God gave maybe Ten. like 15, 15 talents. <laughs> maybe like 15. And I have to express myself. Yeah. I have to find in a way. Ways. So if you are there, find an outlet. Mm. Let but, it out. but, but, yeah. What I would just add to what Mani has said, if you're under unemployment, try to make sure that the work is not suffering. Suffering, thank so you. So where true. there's a problem is where you lose focus. Mm -hmm. If then, you want to yeah. do something, everybody needs those multiple streams of income, but ensure that you're dedicating your time to who is paying you salary. Because, because if you don't, they will people, sack you. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't, um, when you start employing people, they'll, they'll, do, they'll do, do the same thing to you, you. actually. They'll yes. do the same yes. to you as well. Thank you. I think we had a friend. What a great way to wrap up the week. Thank yes. you so much, Nello. Thank, thank you, you, Mary. We had a fantastic conversation. Us. Thank you, Manny Money. Yes, Hi. Jesus. <laughs> I'm following you home. <laughs> now, before we go, ensure you follow us on Instagram at Waysho Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your family and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. You can only be financially free when you your passive income exceeds your expenses that you are sleeping and the money is working for you like uh, mm -hmm. mary says she wants to be in another country and the money will be working for her somewhere else yeah that's what we're looking forward to we'll see you guys live on monday at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screen enjoy <laughs>